Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thank you for being part of it. When you get a chance, check out the website. Lots to see and do there. You can grab t-shirts, stickers, and tech help, and become a member of the Members Ride section by sending in your photos. Speaking of that, I'm behind on my email, so everybody stay patient. Before we get started today, I wanted to say hello to Xander. This cool little guy is really into Volkswagens. He's a family friend and uh, friends with his mom, and he is really into Volkswagens. I think that's so cool. Thanks, Xander, for liking Beatles. They're important. All right, so today what we're going to do is I got to uh, get the rear assemblies done for the braking system. Uh, there's a reason. The quarter sections are going to be welded up next week, and I'm going to have the transmission and the undercarriage cleaned up. You'll get to see some of that stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and clean the transmission up, put new boots on it, so I'll be filming that. And I want to assemble the back end underneath once it's done with the rust bullet. So I'm going to be able to slam the break-in backing plates, everything up. So I'm going to do a video today on redoing the backing plates, cleaning them up, spraying them. They'll sit for 24 hours, which will only take two seconds thanks to editing of films. And we're going to put the new wheel cylinders, new brake assemblies on, so you'll get to see it up close, especially for some of you guys that don't do this stuff normally. And for you guys that said, there was a couple comments what are you getting done on the car we want to watch? So you know what? I got to try to show more things that I'm doing. I didn't know anybody was that interested in just following along, which is really cool. So we'll be doing the front end soon. I'm going to be wire wheeling the whole underneath of the car next week and hitting it with rust bullet. So as a promise, the rust bullet, I'm going to show all of that because I think a lot of you like the watch to see the process of refurbishing the factory pans when they're in good condition and how to save them. Okay, that's enough. Let's go on and get on this. So I removed these, obviously. Let me just get one put aside and out of the way from the car. Uh, I unbolted the wheel cylinders. Obviously, you save your bolts, but I do have new ones. So I'll be putting them on. We're going to be doing all this together. Uh, I got new spring kits, new brakes. So we're going to clean all this stuff, though, and make it look pretty. The adjusters, we're going to go over a couple of things about the adjusters. So, and of course there's springs. That's for the e-bag cable to come through. We're going to talk about this too. Okay, so there's the bolt. It's stuck in there. Okay, no problem. Let's get all this stuff apart. Let's wire wheel up and clean it. Spray it. And then we're going to go ahead and go over... Quite a few things while we're putting it together with all the new parts and see how nice it comes out and what it looks like okay so the best way i found to do this is i'm going to put it in a vise and run a wire wheel around it so i'm going to speed a lot of this film up one important thing here i'm going to show you your wire wheeling don't bust these tabs off because that's what holds these adjusters in place to keep them from turning on you so be careful with your wire wheel around these. These ones are nice and solid. You don't want to break those tabs. We're going to go over a lot of tips and how to keep the brake shoes moving smoothly, how to keep bad things from happening and freezing up on you. It'll be perfect time to do all these tips and tricks with you. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put this in a vise. I'm going to wire wheel this up real good and clean it. So I'm going to speed some of that film up, okay? I'm going to find a spot where I'm not unbending anything, like a flat spot to hold it. There we go. And that'll hold it tight. Let me see if you're in camera view. Make sure to wear safety glasses and a dust mask. Okay. At least this, some of this stuff keeps the stuff, you know, particles from getting into you. See why you wear safety glasses? Now I know some of you are going to say, why don't you get this all sandblasted? Because I'm not, okay? I'm wire wheeling it nice and smooth. It's actually smoother than it looks. 
And I'm going to go ahead with some paint, let it dry, and then, of course, reassemble all the new parts, which will come out really good. But I'm not going to get this sandblast and everything. There's just no need for it. So let's continue. Okay, let me wipe this off real quick here. I'm going to blow it off with the air gun before I start spraying. Now, if this was a full-blown restoration I was doing for somebody else or what have you, then I would just buy new backing plates. But this car is going to be used as a driver. So doing what I'm doing here is perfectly fine. Could have I had it sandblasted in that? Of course I could, but I'm not spending the money since I'm spending so much, even a stroker motor is going to add up. It's pointless. Once I paint them, they'll look pretty, and I'll make everything slide really nicely. So, not a big deal. They'll look good when they're done. And I don't want to take a grinder to them and warp something, you know, so this will be fine. For what I'm doing, it'll work great. And I know some of you, well, why aren't you using four-wheel discs? Because I don't have the money for that right now. Will I a little bit down the road? Absolutely. So as you can see, here we'll bring you up. This is good enough for what we're doing, okay? I'm only going to show you me doing one, you know, and then I'll show you both of them when they're finished. But that's good enough. Remember, be careful with these. Do not knock these off of there. You need them on there. I believe you can still buy these. But then you got to weld them on and everything, you know. And these ones are nice and tight. So, but you want to clean inside these holes really good too. So, I'm going to spray them out, blow them out real good because that's where the adjusters go. Now, while these are drying with the paint, we're going to go over a couple of other things and clean some parts up and have them ready. So, when these dry, we'll assemble them and you'll see how nice it come out. So, give me a second here. Okay, you can use whatever you want on this. <clears throat> Losing my voice. Uh, I've got uh, Rust-Oleum 2 times gloss paint and primer. Uh, I was going to use Rust Bullet on it, but I don't really feel the need to with something like this. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea if, in fact, you did that, though. It would probably make them last a little longer. But this isn't going to be driven uh, in the snow or anything like that. So I'm just going to use the uh, Rust-Oleum 2 times. So... Choose whatever you want on it, but wear a mask. This isn't even good enough, but my other mask is down the house. So I'm going to go ahead and spray it. Hang tight. Remember, make sure that you wipe this off real good. I already wiped it off with the degreaser. Uh, I also took a little bit of plastic and shoved it in the holes so that you don't get paint inside there. You're still going to clean those out when you're done, but it keeps the heavy stuff from going inside. So let's give it a spray. let that tack up for a minute and then we'll be spraying the other sides again with a second coat so give me one second we're going to heat the metal up with the heat gun don't go burning yourself these things get really hot one more coat I always do two coats Now, like I said, if I would have it sandblasted, it would take all the little pock marks out. But I'm really not that concerned about them. They're smooth to the touch, not to the look, if that makes any sense. And then the back's all done. It'll look good when it's all together. So what I'm going to do, obviously I got to do the other one, but it is smooth to the touch. It just looks pity. But like I said, I'm not worried. We're not putting this in a car show. You just want it to function properly to keep from rusting further and you want it to look nice. I don't know why nobody's gonna see it, 
but we're going to go ahead, get our parts out, see what we have on a workbench while this is drying, and of course the other one. So I've got the wheel cylinders and the brake shoes. I don't know where I bought these from. That's weird. Uh, welcome to Dunkin' Donuts. Somehow I do believe this is not the receipt that goes in this box. <laughs> So there's the brake shoes. That's really weird. I don't know. I don't remember buying them. Uh, here is the wheel cylinders. Wolfsburg West. I like buying from them. I did pay the extra for the better ones. So we're going to go ahead and match them up just to make sure with our old ones. I need something to cut with. There it is. Bought these a while ago. I was stockpiling parts. These ones look like a little bit bigger of a bore for some reason to me. Oh, no, they don't. No, they are the same. Okay. So our wheel cylinders are the same. Always save your bolts, though. Okay. So here's what we're going to do while the backing plates are drying. Let me show you. While the backing plates are drying, you're going to take advantage of that time. And you're going to take these adjusters completely apart. Okay. And you're going to wire wheel and clean all of this. Because you want everything to function extremely smooth. I needed a 13 to get this bolt out for some reason. It's stuck. So I'm going to keep this one near the wheel cylinder so I know which it goes into. And we're going to clean these up. We're going to take this apart. I believe I bought a new spring kit. Wait a second. Okay. New spring kit. Have everything I need. So, let's take this apart. Where are my glasses? I'm all over the place here today. Alrighty. Let me get needle nose. Now, Check this out. See this clip on the top spring? Don't lose that clip. Isn't that nice how that holds that together? Okay. So, whatever you do, don't lose that clip. Try to keep track of it. Okay. And then, wow, being a bugger. Been on there a while. If you're unsure of this stuff, okay, do this. This will help you. Now this came from the top and this came from a bottom. That came from the top. Okay. Now what to do, and you see I kept that bolt near my wheel cylinder, the one that goes in it. This is for the backing plate. Forget where that nut goes. Anyhow, put your spring here, your bottom spring. Okay. Then take your top spring, put it there, put this clip next to it so you remember the way it goes on. Take this and set it just like that near the top spring. And you'll know which way it goes on if you're not familiar with these, okay? We have to flip this over. This is for the emergency brake, and we're gonna take this apart. Give me one second. Gotta spread this, you wanna come in close? Wow, that's been on her forever. But then again, the car sat since the 70s. So let me give it a tap with a mallet. I don't know if I can do it without putting it in a vise. Nope. Probably not. And maybe I can. You just never know. That's how it works. And I'm probably in front of you. But I pried that off. Okay, let me back you back up. So, the clip is right there. You know where that goes, right? Flip this over. Can you see? Pull that out. Now on here, there is a little washer right there. So you're going to want to take this all apart and clean it. But for right now, we're going to put that together right there. Now to make it more comfortable for you, you're going to be using new brake shoes, obviously. Okay? So what you can do to make things a little easier on yourself later, if you're new to this, take that and put it just like that. 
okay? And you'll know every, where everything goes. Now, your adjusters are going to need cleaned up. Everything will, your nuts and bolts, everything. So let's do that real quick, okay? Now I'm only cleaning up <clears throat> one of each to just show you what I'm doing. So let me bring you in close. Now take a look. Look how clean that is. Now you can buy brand new ones, okay? But to be honest with you, I like original German matter metal better. Talk much? See how shiny? There's a reason, because I'm going to tell you in a second. There's the adjuster. See how clean that is. That's very important because that's where the brake shoe slides, okay? And yes, it does slide on it a little wee bit, okay? Now let's go over this. These obviously thread into there. So you're going to stop and you're going to buy a tube of... Yes, anti-seize, okay? Because you're going to put it around here. So when you put the shaft inside there, it spins nice and free. And you're going to put anti-seize on these threads because you want that to all move very nicely. No, before you ask in the comments, you cannot use regular grease. If you use regular grease, it collects dirt. Trust me, it does. I'm not lying or making these things up for entertainment, okay? I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to wire wheel this bar. This clip, I have new springs. I'm going to wire wheel this bar and this clip and make everything nice and neat. And then by then, the backing plates will be dry because I got to do the other one. And then we'll go ahead and reassemble. And I'm going to show you greasing points also that are important. And we're going to go over a couple of things that's very important. So I'll be right back. Okay, so it's been 24 hours. And as you can tell, my throat's sore because I don't feel good. Ugh. Anyhow, we went ahead and painted them up. I'll take you up closer in a second. And like I said, you can buy brand new backing plates. I don't really like the quality of some of the new parts. So when I can save things like this, I do. This old German heavy metal is always superior. Yes, I could have got it sandblasted, but I didn't feel the need to because the brakes are still going to slide nice and smooth on here without an issue. Let's take them over to the workbench and get close. Okay, so they really don't look that bad. <clears throat> I'm going to bring you in close when we're going to start this assembly. And the reason I'm doing this now, like I had said, if I mentioned it earlier, I can't remember because that was actually yesterday. Uh, I'm assembling these now, set them aside on my shelf. So when I clean up the transmission and put it in, I can just bolt these on and they're ready to roll. So it's better to do it on the bench if you can, if your car is apart. Don't go pulling your backing plates to do a brake job. I'm kind of giving this a mild restore. So let's take a look close up. I'll bring you over and then you don't have to look at me. So I'm going to go ahead and you are going to look through the GoPro. It kind of feels weird. Uh, so you can look right down like you're me working on it. I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to buy everything I can to be helpful. So let's go ahead and try this view. Hopefully it works out. <laughs> okay, hopefully this shows up well. I've never done this before like this. At least I don't think I have. Use this anti-seize. Make sure you get some of this. And here's something I recommend for the backing plates for the brake shoes to slide very smoothly. It's called Seal Glide. And you can get it on Amazon or you can get it at AutoZone, wherever you see fit. It's for caliper slides and all contact points. You need this, trust me. So... Here's our backing plate. Well, one of them. I'm going to push that aside. As you could see, yes, I could have had it sandblasted, but I didn't see no point in it. If this is not going to be seen. The brakes will move smooth on it. The back looks good enough. I really wouldn't overthink it. I like the original German metal. So, first things first, have you cleaned up everything? We cleaned everything up nice and neat. Looks like new. Cleaned up our little bolts. One goes in the back of the wheel cylinder. My brain stopped working. I cleaned up my pins. There's a reason I did this. Just in case the new ones don't work. 
Last time I got a uh, brake spring kit, they were no good. I don't know why. We'll find out. So, did you clean everything up? Everything has to move very smooth, okay? All right, enough education. You aren't stupid. Okay, I got my wheel cylinder ready. Let's get our brake shoes. Make sure you match them up. Make sure everything's looking okie dokie. Sorry, I have a little bit of a cold. And no, I don't have COVID. As everybody's worried about. This one has an extra hole. So they made them universal for both sides, from what I can tell. Let me see. Yeah, they did. Okay, long as the holes are there for what you need is what matters. Okay. Oh, this is weird filming this way. I can't get used to it. Okay, so let me angle the other camera down here too, just in case. Okay, I got a two, two camera angle. Two camera angle just in case. So first thing we will do is, I guess let's put the wheel cylinder on. I don't really ever think there's any a specific order. Okay. Now, one thing I like to do, and of course, again, do what you want. I like taking a little bit of anises and put it on this bolt thread. And I can't find my rag. Ah, okay, so that's on there. That way, if you've got to remove this wheel cylinder later, this bolt will come right out, okay? So let's put our wheel cylinder on. Line your hole up. Grab your 13 wrench or socket, whatever you use. No, obviously I'm just snugging stuff real quick because I'm doing a demonstration. So don't be mean. Okay. So now, oh, I know what we forgot to do. Well, that came out. Okay, they came out already. I had pieces of plastic in here to keep paint from going inside. So it worked. Plastic fell out somewhere along the way. So what we're going to do is take... A little anisees and just put it in there a little bit in each hole and then you're gonna coat the adjusters anyhow so here, I'll leave that lid off for right now okay so what we are going to do is find the contact points of where your brakes slide obviously it's going to be there and there okay because your brake shoes are going to move in and out okay so you want them to be able to move and that's where the seal glide will come in now what i'm going to do here and don't use regular grease grease attracts dirt it collects dirt i should say so first we're going to put some anisees on the adjusters. Then you're going to wind them in. Make sure it coated it. It did, see that? Okay. Then you're going to put some anisees around the part that spins. Okay, now see there's an angle. I don't know how to show you this. There's an angle on this. So you want the brake to sit in that angle. If you have it the wrong way, it will not sit into it. Do you see what I mean? The brake needs to sit into that angle. You'll know if you put it on wrong, the brake shoes will not fit right. So let's wind this in all the way. 
and you're going to put that in just like that. Make sure you have this adjusted to where the shoe, it's going to, here I'll show you, that slot is going to be angled like this. It's like a TP, okay? A little TP, just picture that. Alrighty, let's do the other one real quick. I know you say, man, you mess around. I'm just trying to help people that have never done this before. So I try to show stuff close up the best that I can. That's why I buy this extra equipment that I do for better filming. So hopefully it helps. And I know y'all appreciate it because I appreciate when I watch some film clips, just like I fixed my washer and I actually fixed it because of off axis builds. Thanks to his video, I went ahead and was able to fix my washer and saved a lot of money. Now that's not what he's actually on there for, but he did it to be nice. Check out his channel. He has Night Owl. He has a uh, 68 Beetle, but it's totally custom, custom, custom. Show him some love and give him some views. He just got done moving, so he got a lot on his plate, but his beetle is really, really cool. So let me put this on there. Okay, so now we're gonna be ready for our brake shoes to go on. Just kind of set them there. Does it feel good? Does it seem okay? All right, because next we gotta go ahead. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm trying to not lose my voice here on you. Okay, now don't forget your wavy washer. It's technically a lock washer, but it's a wavy washer. Okay, that will go on here. Okay, then this goes through there. Now, one thing I like to do, again, I know, I like to put on a little anti seize. I had to take, you could see the ridges around this. You could see the ridges around this. I had to take channel locks to get it off because it was seized. But then again, like I said, the car has been sitting <coughs> since 1976, I believe, was the last inspection sticker on it. And guess what? There we go, okay. Thought they didn't drill the hole right, which really wouldn't have surprised me, but okay, that's moving nice. Ah, uh, see what I did? Put that on first, and I shouldn't have because I'm not paying attention, it goes through this. arm and then goes in okay now this is the part that's not a whole lot of fun that's got to go in there so i don't think i got too big of a hammer here okay let me get something No matter how much aggravation it can be, make sure that curvy washer is in there. It keeps pressure. You could simply snap these on real easy without the curvy washer, but don't do that. So it's in the slot. It's nice and seated. So we're ready. There we go. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. Where's our springs? Let's open our goodie bag. Come on, get out of there. Okay. Let's make sure these fit in the caps nice. Okay, these ones might be okay. The last set I bought were horrible. I forget where I got them. I think, no, I better not say. But anyhow, <laughs> 
because when I say something about some places, everybody gets upset. Check your springs. They're the right size. Okay. Don't you fall everywhere. Check your lower springs. They're okay. Alrighty. Now, we're going to go ahead and break out the seal glide. Okay. It's just a little gel, so to speak. This stuff's been out for years. Years and years and years. But it'll keep your shoes and your caliper pins if you have disc brakes. I'll put some right here. Sliding very smoothly. Okay. Let me put the lid back on so I don't have it everywhere. Now your junk will move smooth. Okay. So we're going to <coughs> take, <coughs> sorry, I'm trying, folks, that bar, make sure everything is set up right on it. It's going to move smooth. Somehow I think it's easier to do on the car because I'm fighting with something <clears throat> moving around on the workbench. So, okay, remember that clip we had? I just cleaned it up a little bit. Okay. And we're going to take our short spring. Just making sure you're in camera angle there. Okay. So we're going to take our short spring. We are going to hook it into the hole. Even though it wanted to fight with me for a second, of course. Because I'm on film. That's how it always works. found it easier to use the side cutters although reaching down on a workbench isn't easy either though so we have that on I don't want to push that apart right now okay so if you were on the car be straight up like that you would want to put your keepers in place first to hold them it just don't matter because it's laying flat so Okay, running out of steam here because I don't feel good, but I'm trying. I won't miss a video each week for y'all. Okay, alrighty. Now let's try these new ones. <coughs> I didn't have a lot of luck with them last time. We'll see what happens this time. And I have these. Of course, you know what those are. I have two different ones. It holds the cup to the spring. <clears throat> okay. These are painted, but let's see if we can do it without fighting. Nope. Of course not. sure you have it angled the right way. <clears throat> Come on, baby. There we go. Like that. Let's do the other one. Remember, if you are on a car, it's going to be sitting like that. Whoops, sorry, like that. So you want to put the keepers on first. Okay, I did it differently because it's laying flat on a workbench. So, make sure to line it up. Oh, 
pain in the butt. I swear the new parts <clears throat> do not fit as well as the old parts. Guess what I didn't do? Put the clip on. So, no big deal. Spring. See, I told gents in the beginning, don't forget this clip. Okay, let's push that in there. Grab your side cutters, and I'm in the way a little bit. Like that. Okay, so everything is in place. <clears throat> Losing my voice, I'm sorry and ready to go on i did these because at least it's out of the way okay and don't lose any of your bolts like the one here i'm gonna put in temporarily i'll use anti-seize on it later i'll show you in a minute what it is just so I don't lose it. That's for the emergency brake. Okay, and there's a little bracket here for that. I still gotta clean up. Not a big deal right now. Uh, I hope that made sense to you. I thought it'd be easier to show you on the workbench. Let me get the other camera and get up close. So, there you have it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I'm losing my voice finally. I knew that was coming. Uh, everything looks nice and neat. Now, let me get in front of the camera. Now, most of you are going to be doing this on the car, so it's going to be up like that. So you're going to put your pins in first to hold the brake shoes in place. I'm doing a mild restore on them so they're sitting on my workbench because I got everything apart. Don't forget to grab some Seal Glide, and no, I don't get commission for you buying something from Walmart or Amazon. I don't play that game. And anti-seize. You can grab that from Amazon, too, or... Uh, Walmart AutoZone and I wasn't being a wise guy, but I don't got time for the commission crap with the stuff like this I just don't okay. I'm trying to help you not help a company, but I'm trying to help you get the right product. So Okay, uh, that's done. It's ready to go together. So I at least wanted to show that uh, Yes, sometimes you do struggle like I did with the horseshoe clip on here. It's normal. We're human beings Make sure you lubricate everything how it's supposed to go. Don't forget your clips. And that's ready to go. Okay, so that was this week's DIY video. Uh, I know a lot of you had said, hey, you know, how's the progress coming on the car? I was held up for a little while with some stuff on my house. I'm a human being, but I did put a video up every week. Uh, and I try to take you guys with me and gals when I'm doing stuff like, you know, the scrapyard if you don't want to see them films, just let me know. Sometimes I take a break and get other stuff done, as we all do as human beings. Today is Saturday. I didn't get my film up on Friday because I haven't felt well, as you could probably tell, but I don't let nobody down. It's not in my personality to do that. So we're going to head and continue on. I got somebody coming here in about a week. They're going to help me with the rear quarter sections, a body man. I don't know if he'll let me film it. If not, it's okay. I'll take Fitch pictures of the process throughout because uh, I want her to come out perfect and I didn't go to body school. I can do body work, but not like I want this done. So I'll see you tonight. If you're on 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and chat tonight, let's get together. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I tried my best. I'll see you soon.